Hi, my name is Dr. Anthony Lemaire and I'm a cardiothoracic surgeon. Today we're going to talk about repairing a type A aortic dissection. Before we get started though, let's review the anatomy of the heart, the aorta, and define what a type A aortic dissection is. Okay, this is a model of the heart. I like to think of the heart in terms of sides. This is the right side, right atrium, right ventricle, and this is the left side, left atrium, left ventricle. Blood will classically go from the left atrium to the left ventricle. The left ventricle will then squeeze and push blood to this structure. This is referred to as the aorta. It's the largest blood vessel in the body. It carries blood to the brain through these blood vessels. It goes behind the heart and supplies the other organs, the kidney, liver, um, and actually supplies, it supplies the other parts of the body too, like the extremities. Now this aorta in the chest is divided into different structures. There's the ascending aorta, the arch of the aorta, and below the left subclavian artery here, it's defined as the descending aorta. Now, for the purposes of our discussion today, I'm just gonna focus on the ascending aorta. Now, the aorta itself is broken up or defined by three layers. There's an innermost layer referred to as the intima, there's, and that's actually the smooth surface of the, of the aorta that is in contact with blood. There's the media, which contains muscle and elastin fibers, and actually allows the aorta to contract and expand when the heart beats. There's also the adventitia, which is the strength layer of the aorta. Now, a dissection of the aorta essentially means there's a tear in the innermost wall or the intima of the aorta. When that happens, it's a surgical emergency. What happens is the blood gets inside and it tears, it goes inside the intima and actually goes in between the layers of the aorta, which can lead to a rupture. If the aorta ruptures, specifically in the ace in the aorta, that can lead to bleeding around the heart and that can be fatal. When we refer to as a dissection, once again, we're referring to as a tear in the innermost layer of the aorta. Now, you can have a dissection that involves the ascending aorta. You can also have a dis dissection that involves the descending, and they're actually managed differently. Any aortic, any aortic dissection that involves the intima, excuse me, that involves the ascending aorta is referred to as a type A dissection, and that's a surgical emergency. People need to get to the operating room soon. When it involves the descending aorta only, below the left subclavian artery, that's referred to as a type B dissection, and that classification is referred to as a Stanford classification, um, just for your own knowledge. Again, they're treated differently. Now, let's, let's talk more about what people present with when they have a type A dissection. Commonly, these patients have symptoms, but they don't always. The most common symptom is chest pain, sometimes they have back pain, and sometimes the pain goes from the chest to the back. It's often severe, it's constant, and these patients are often very uncomfortable. They can have other symptoms or signs as well. They can be short of breath, they can be paralyzed, they can pass out. There are a lot of different symptoms and signs for aortic dissections, and it's up to our staff, the medical community, to identify them. Now, once the patient is diagnosed with a type A dissection, and it's often a combination of physical findings, signs and symptoms, and diagnostic tests, the most common being a CT scan, the cardiac surgery is notified, and if it's a type A dissection involving the ascending aorta, oftentimes the patient will get right to the operating room. Now, the critical aspect of this operation is we, we're trying to replace the ascending aorta. Once again, there's a tear that involves the ace and the aorta, and we need to replace the ace and the aorta, and that's replaced with a graft, and that graft will last forever. The graft is classically either a Dacron graft, and sometimes there's other grafts like a cortex, Gore-Tex graft. Now, once the patient gets to the operating room, they'll go to sleep. At that time, they'll be prepared for surgery, which essentially means they'll be prepped and draped. Another critical aspect of performing this operation is to be able to get on the heart-lung machine, cardiopulmonary bypass, and that requires both arterial access and venous access. Now, when there's a dissection or a tear in the aorta, that makes it difficult to get arterial access because there's a tear here. But there are different ways in which we can do it. 
We can get arterial access to the axillary arteries, which are below the clavicle. We can go directly to the aorta with the use of ultrasound. And we can also go to the femoral arteries to get arterial access. What, in terms of venous access, we can either go directly to the right atrium, or we can use the common femoral vein in the groin. Once again, once the patient's in the operating room, we'll open up their chest, we'll get arterial and venous access, and go on the heart-lung machine. Once we're on the heart-lung machine, we'll cool the patient's body temperature down, and eventually what's referred to as arresting the heart. We'll give medication to the heart so it's not moving while we're sewing. Now, there are a lot of details I'm leaving out, but it, once again, the essential aspect is we're cutting here, we're cutting here, and we're replacing the ascending aorta with a graft. And once again, that graft will last forever. It's commonly a Dacron graft, but we could also use a Gore-Tex graft and other grafts as well. Once the graft is sewed in, we'll rewarm the patient and try to come off the heart-lung machine. Once we're stabilized, no concern for bleeding, and we're off the heart-lung machine, we'll then close the patient's chest and then take him to the intensive care unit. Now this, once again, is a surgical emergency with a high mortality rate. It can be as high as 30%. Now, once the patient's in the ICU, they'll classically spend somewhere between five and seven days in the hospital. Then they'll either go home or rehab. Once the patient goes home, the relationship between the surgeon and the medical community and the patient actually lasts forever. As I mentioned before, we're replacing the ascending aorta, but oftentimes this dissection or tear involves the arch and descending aorta and even, even the aorta in the abdomen. And that needs to be followed, often with a yearly CT scan. Okay, that's a general description of repairing of a type A aortic dissection. If you have any additional questions or comments, please let me know. Thank you very much.